enjoy the day one keynote. We're now gonna go ahead and transition over to our Snapdragon site tech talk. So in this session, um, we're gonna start with a presentation and then we're gonna open it up for Q&A before we allow you to walk around the room and get hands-on with the demos that are shown during the presentation. So at any point during the presentation, in order to um, submit your questions for the Q&A, you can just scan the QR code listed on each of the screens. Um, and we'll also flash it at the end of the presentation as well. You can submit your questions, um, and then we'll, we'll obviously read them uh, out loud to all of our presenters during the Q&A. So with that said, I will go ahead and introduce Carl Wheelton, our first speaker, uh, Senior Director of Product Management. <laughs> Welcome to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 AI Tech Track. It all starts here. Our state-of-the-art AI technology is born from smartphones. Then we scale it into other Qualcomm products. And today, our AI technology scales all the way from wireless earbuds to automobiles and the data center. And today, we're very proud to announce a major milestone. We have now shipped over 2 billion AI-enabled products to date, making us one of the largest AI companies in the world and the AI inferencing leaders at the edge. So what can you do with AI? The real question is, what is AI already doing for you? Snapdragon Smart is already powering all of these use cases, and we're innovating with more use cases every day where other companies are still struggling to fully implement AI or focusing solely on benchmarks. And we're continuing to evolve beyond mobile. So how have our AI solutions been able to go so far so fast? Well, our unique solutions are born from our unique history. So let's go back in time. It all started for Snapdragon in 2007 with the Snapdragon S1 processor. Our modem DSPs have been used for many years, but the Hexagon was used for the first time for audio processing in the Snapdragon S1. Um, and it continued to be used for modem processing. This was a really efficient scalar processing engine, and it started to be used for more use cases, um, including computer vision and image processing. And so, naturally, we added a vector processing engine to our scalar engine. That made it a great target for the e emerging use case of on-device artificial intelligence. So we made improvements to the CPU and Adreno GPU to make them uh, more AI, uh, AI um, capable. And this became our first generation AI engine. We continued to improve that over the next couple of years. And with the Snapdragon 845, we doubled the vector performance as well as adding a DSP to, um, for, for sens uh, a sensor DSP for more use cases. And then in the Snapdragon 855, as we saw more and more AI, AI usage with the Hexagon processor and with Snapdragon overall with our AI engine, we added a dedicated AI pr uh, processor called the Hexagon Tensor Accelerator. The next year, we doubled the number of Hexagon Tensor Accelerators, and we increased our performance across the board. And at this point, we had learned a tremendous amount about designing hardware to run AI workloads efficiently for maximum performance, power efficiency, and flexibility. We'd implemented multiple generations of dedicated AI processors, AI optimized DSPs and GPUs, and we saw what we needed to build. Since we designed every element of the solution, we were able to build it. For Snapdragon 888, we designed a new architecture for, Hex for Hexagon, a fused AI optimized processor with scalar, vector, and tensor included, a large, tightly coupled memory, and lots of closely coupled control processing. This is the culmination of many years of iterative innovation in efficiently executing AI workloads. The next year, last year with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, we increased performance across the board, and we also upgraded the AI capability that we added to the sensing hub. That brings us to today, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 hexagon processor and AI engine. And that's what I'm gonna talk about now. Again, our Qualcomm AI engine includes the latest and greatest cryo CPU, Adreno GPU, hexagon processor, sensing hub. And 
To focus on Hexagon Processor, first of all, I'm gonna talk about the first feature, which is a dedicated power delivery system. This is kind of like adding a new breaker system to your home. It gives you the flexibility to um, supply as much power as you need for a really cool use case, or if you've got a more modest workload, you can turn the voltage down for maximum power efficiency. But we wanted to go further than that. It's all really about power efficiency in AI, getting the most you can. And so we looked at where is power getting burned in this system. The first critical one of the two that I'm gonna talk about today, moving data around the system and especially reads and writes to external memory. What causes unnecessary reads and writes to happen? Where does this happen in the chip and why? Well, let's take a camera for example. Let's say, say you, take a, uh, you take a camera. One of those cool AI use cases like AI bouquet, super resolution, night mode, those are implemented as neural networks. And each of those neural networks is uh, a number of, uh, it's uh, basically numbers that refer to the, to the pixels, and then those are split up into a number of layers. Each of the layers gets processed um, one by one, typically, and each one of those layers is processed on one part of the hexagon processor, the scalar uh, accelerator, the tensor accelerator, the vector accelerator. The typical way of running this is to take a single layer, load in the image, run that layer, and then when that layer's run, read it back out to, uh, write it back out to memory. Unfortunately, this brings up the second thing that I wanna focus on today. Only part of the hexagon processor is getting used at a time. In this case, it's a vector uh, accelerator. Um, now it's the tensor accelerator. Only one at a time because we're only running one layer at a time reads and writes, and between every single layer, you read and write the entire thing into and out of external memory. Big waste of power, big sink of energy. One thing that the industry's done to address this is to take a network and break it up into smaller tiles and then execute multiple layers on that smaller tile uh, without reading and writing the intermediate values out to memory. So this does take a little bit of control management to make sure that you can manage all of this, but it saves a little bit of memory traffic to and from memory. And so this is the technique that the leading AI companies use for AI processing today. Today we are announcing for the first time Qualcomm's unique way of taking this method to the next level. The first in the industry, we call it micro-tile inferencing. Because of the large amount of closely coupled control processing available on the hexagon processor, we're able to crack neural networks up into even smaller tiles that we call micro tiles to get even better performance and power efficiency. Hexagon's got enough control processing capability to crack a single network into tens of thousands of these micro tiles, but the real complexity is in the ordering and the sequencing of execution. Over several years, with incredible engineering, we've been able to figure out how to execute all this to get maximum performance, power efficiency, and make it completely transparent to the, to the developer. You can see here some of the advantages we get with microtile inferencing. First of all, with all those microtiles, we can keep all three elements of the hexagon processor humming along at the same time for really efficient per, uh, um, performance. The other thing is with the ability to execute whatever micro tile whenever we want, we can execute as many as 10 or more layers at the same time, at the same time getting rid of almost all of the intermediate reads and writes. Perhaps most importantly, because of the tremendous flexibility allowed by this hardware solution, we can make improvements in software to existing hardware that's out in the field, meaning that we can adjust to new networks and even new use cases seamlessly. And that is microtile inferencing, our unique approach to accelerating complex AI models. We've also added acceleration for additional activation functions in hardware, and we've added specialized hardware to specifically improve a type of convolution called group convolution, which is important. And we focus specifically on the tensor accelerator with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, improving the performance significantly by, by as much as 2x. So that is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 hexagon processor. Now, to talk more about AI uh, use cases and applications, I'll hand it over to Vinesh. Okay. So let's use this section to focus on how we are driving leadership class 
AI experiences on Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, while supporting the most complex and state-of-the-art deep learning models. One among them happens to be transformers. In layman's terms, transformers are a class of networks that actually understands context by tracking relationship between sequential data and having that embedded intelligence itself helps really support complex use cases like language translation and transcription in the textual domain or create better quality segmentation maps in camera and computer vision based use cases. Now, given a large mobile ecosystem footprint, we have seen a pumped up demand from a developer community to really support these class of difficult networks. So in Snapdragon Gen 2, we have put an added emphasis to seamlessly deploy these networks. And this was accomplished working with the software teams. Some of the investments actually revolved around having the ability and flexibility to reshape the input tensors while not compromising the structure of the model itself and thereby pushing for higher inferences on the edge. Or having the ability to reduce the number of reshaping operators completely while not compromising on accuracy. And this helped lower the computational overhead and making the execution of the model much easier on the edge. And having the flexibility and option of providing and enabling the most advanced quantization techniques that automatically helps quantize the layer and helps the developer choose the data format by choice without compromising on accuracy, but getting the added advantage of higher performance on the edge. And last but not the least is the programming flex flexibility of the hexagon processor itself. Now, the combination of all these investments actually led to some fantastic results on Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 has more than quadrupled the performance compared to 8 Gen 1. Now, one might ask, this is great from a foundational investment standpoint, but what are you actually doing with this? So, in this case, we partnered with our premium partner, Xiaomi, and we have taken their transformer models integrated this into our hexagon processor, and for the very first time, helped enable complex multilingual translation and transcription completely on device. Let's show you a demo. Take it, Jerry. So let's show you a cool demo here. So what Shivani is showing right now is a, it might look like a conventional translation app, but under the hood is actually running three language models at the same time, all based on transformer networks. And this is running solely on device. As you can see here, there's no Wi-Fi or cellular signal. So let's say you're at an event like this with media from all around the world, and you want to translate your speech into not just one, but two languages. This is how you do it. Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is the platform of choice for running industry-leading AI use cases like multi-language translation. What, you are showing, what we are seeing here is the hexagon processor at work translating English into Chinese and Spanish at the same time. Back to you, Vinish. Thank you, Judy. Wasn't that remarkable? Just making it human-to-human -human interaction much more easier. OK. AI is mincing the way humans perceive the world using vision, text, and speech-based modalities. In Snapdragon, we continue to push the boundaries of AI innovation by fusing these very modalities quite cleanly. And that, ladies and gentlemen, lays the foundation for cognitive AI. In layman's terms, adding common sense to AI. Let's show you a demo. Jerry, please take it over. Thank you, Vinish. So let's show of hands here. Uh, how many of you use text to search within your photo album today? Should be. A little bit more than that. So, <laughs> so this is actually uh, this is a brand new thing that wasn't available a couple years ago, thanks to AI. So what we're showing today is actually the evolution of that. So Kiherme here has a photo album here. So let's say I want to search uh, beach photos. Let's do a basic search, beach. So uh, tens of thousands of videos, depending how big your photo album is, uh, uh, videos and photos will pop up. 
that's beach related. But the thing is, it doesn't tell you which one has the best moments or best experiences, right? So with our solution, something called cognitive emotion tagging, AI intelligently sorts the best moments for you. You can even click on a video, and AI will automatically tag the best and most interesting moments for you, so you don't have to look through the entire video. That is cognitive emotion tagging. Back to you, Vinish. Thank you, Jerry. Wasn't that another spectacular demo? Thank you. Now let's uh, shift our attention slightly to a different topic, data types. Historically, Snapdragon has done a fantastic job able to transform the most complex deep learning models from floating point 32 to int 16 to int 8 while not compromising on accuracy and getting the added advantage of higher performance and low performance per watt. Earlier in the talk today, we've announced int 4. Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 happens to be industry's first product that has commercial ready info ready for deployment. And this specific hardware investment actually leads us to give up to 90% performance increase and additional 60% power savings. With this investment of info, we are now able to process any given model much more faster compared to that of its floating point 32 footprint. That only means much better quality of service and a much improved latency, which is much needed today in our developer community. Also, with info investment, we can now process more number of models for the same time scale compared to that of a floating point 32 model. And this is just phenomenal because the plethora of possibilities that it can create in in creating the user experiences is just enormous. Now, one might ask, all this is fantastic from an objective metric standpoint, but does it mean loss of details, especially when you're lowering the bit precision from int 8 to int 4, and that especially involving complex scene captures that has a lot of spatial details? Great question. Let's answer that very question using a demo. We have worked with our premium partner, ArcSoft, and we've actually captured a scene. Here you can see for the same field of view, we have an intake representation and an info representation. And as someone said, image speaks a thousand words. Here you can see for the different regions of interest, the spatial details and the dynamic range continue to be preserved. So in summary, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 continues to push for better performance, much lower memory footprint, better power efficiency, not compromising on accuracy, and most importantly, on image quality. Okay, now let's slightly change the topic of discussion, the benchmarks. I'm pretty sure many of you are you know, wanting to know this. Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, continues its leadership in AI benchmarks compared to its predecessor. Here you have Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 showcasing performance numbers across different categories of benchmarks that are relevant to the mobile phone, either be detection, classification, segmentation, you name it, class of workloads. And it has up to 4.35x better performance compared to that of the predecessor. And comes up with up to 60% better performance per watt. Let me take a moment to emphasize that, which means you're gonna get much better sustained per performance and a much better battery life, which is very critical for all mobile AI applications. In comparison to our competitors, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 obviously beats up the leading mobile competitors again, across all relevant deep learning model architectures that's of relevance. And the same leadership is also shown in the performance per watt category. Okay. In Snapdragon, as I mentioned before, we continue to push the boundaries of AI innovation that has impactful user experience. And this extends also to ultra-low-power domain. 
Now, let's use this section to talk about the latest generation of sensing hub. In the current generation of sensing hub, we now have a dedicated additional AI module invested that comes up with also additional memory. Because of this investment, it gets us up to 2x better performance compared to that of predecessor, and 50% more memory attached compared to that of Agent 1. And this investment helps really support and enable some fantastic use cases like activity recognition, voice detection, QR code detection, and plenty more. And this investment, by far, makes Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 the most powerful ultra-low-power AI engine in the space that has a dedicated AI engine. No one else has this. Sensing Hub also opens up a plethora of possibilities to our developer community, wherein they can do plenty of application development using this investment. Let's focus on benchmarks. For the very first time, we're actually publishing benchmarks in the embedded space that's relevant to the mobile. Across all categories of benchmarks, again, you take the audio modality, the vision modality, or texture modality. Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 outperforms its predecessor by more than 8.8x. That's just remarkable. Now, compared to competition, just glance at that for a second. And you got it right. There's absolutely no competition. Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 sensing of investment, as I mentioned before, is the only processor in this space that has leadership capabilities to support a plethora of use cases and it also shows up in benchmarks. This is just fantastic. Now, investment in Qualcomm Sensing Hub has always led to some fantastic and innovative applications that have been deployed. Let's focus on one among them. We call it the presence detection. It does a lot of cool stuff, including presence detection, enabling your device to lock itself to sleep seconds after you step away. And when you return, Qualcomm Sensing Hub can hear the ambient noise can feel your footsteps, can see changes in lighting, and wake your device to greet you. Experience a convenient way to lock and unlock. Presence detection can wake your device to authenticate touch-free using face recognition, helping improve battery life maintaining privacy, and offering new convenience. Wasn't that cool? <laughs> Welcome to the world of seamlessly enabling lock and unlock using our investments in Sensing Hub. Now, at Snapdragon, we always supported multi-IP communication to really drive some complex use cases. But this actually needed a lot of support from the system OS and also a huge amount of dependency on system memory. For the very first time, we have now actually enabled a physical bridge or a link that's been constructed between the different IPs and Hexagon. We call it the Hexagon Direct Link. This link actually helps drive complex use cases like cognitive ISP between the ISP and the hexagon to really make sure we can support high bandwidth, low latency use cases. Or upscale low resolution frames in the gaming environment between the graphics block and the hexagon. This really makes sure that the quality of service is much better, much improved, and can really drive towards 60, 90, 120 frames of support. So finally, let's conclude some of 
the investments that you have done in its current generation of Hexagon and Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, the, some of the marvel of investments that we have seen. Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 has the very first dedicated power delivery system, much improved and much bigger tensor accelerator. We also have uh, put in the micro tile invest inferencing, and all these investments have actually led to up to 4.35x improvement in performance and up to 60% better performance per watt. As I mentioned before, that only means much better sustained performance and much better battery life. Not to mention, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 also is the world's first commercial ready in for hardware ready for deployment. We also have a dedicated bridge we call the hexagon direct link to support some complex use cases. And last but not the least is an additional AI processor which is established in the sensing hub to really enable plethora of use cases in the ultra low power domain. Okay, with this, I'll hand it over to my colleague and friend, Jeff, who's gonna be talking about some fantastic announcements on Qualcomm AI software and tools. Okay, thank you, Vinesh. So, the Qualcomm AI stack. We first announced it in May of this year, and I wanna spend a bunch of time talking about the AI stack and some really cool, exciting announcements we have to go with it. Now, for the very first time, we've taken all of our AI innovation, all of our AI software, and created a unified AI stack. It's a full software development stack from top to bottom, supporting all of the popular frameworks all the way down to the metal. Now, the idea here is we've unified all of our technology, all of our software stacks into one and focused on this, de on this develop once, deploy anywhere approach to ensure completely seamless execution on our incredible hardware you've been hearing all about today. Now, the real focus here is on the developer, right? We want to minimize the time it takes to go from design to preparing, optimizing, you heard about int4, and then finally deploying your model onto Snapdragon. And so that's really the, the key idea here. And so I want to take you through that AI stack and some of the advancements we've made uh, in this generation of product. So, Looking at the frameworks, we've always focused on having a, a very comprehensive set of access to TensorFlow, PyTorch, Onyx, and so on. And this year, we've added more support there and support specifically for Keras. We've also extended support for the uh, Qualcomm Neural Processing SDK and the Qualcomm AI Engine Direct. Now, I want to spend a second on that AI Engine Direct layer. That's at the heart of the entire stack, and that's really at the heart of this develop once, deploy anywhere. In other words, a complete software stack that goes across all of our silicon. So whether your framework of choice is TensorFlow or PyTorch, um, you're gonna come in through the AI Engine Direct, and you'll be able to use any of those runtimes or the AI Engine Direct to talk to our hardware and program directly to it. So a unified approach and interface to the entire stack. And then how did we build that? We built that on top of a rich set of developer libraries, math libraries, compilers, and programming languages. And of course, on top of our fabulous silicon, spanning all of our silicon system interfaces, device drivers, and emulation support. And of course, operating systems. Android, Windows, and a full assortment of Linux operating systems. So all taken together, Incredible array of, of, of uh, tools to power that whole develop to deploy, innovate to solution uh, time to market. In addition, we continue to add features to our AI model efficiency toolkit or AMET. And last year at this very show, we announced a deep partnership with Google and Vertex AI NAS. Now that has allowed us and our partners to, to create incredible optimizations to these networks, right? Remember that NAS is this technology for optimizing, squeezing, and improving your network. 
So um, we're very happy to announce that our partners have been actively engaging with us and Google on the Vertex AI NAS solution. And today, we have one of those partners to highlight their innovation from Oppo. Yu Wei Lu has brought us a video message to tell you exactly what kind of innovation they've been able to achieve. Hello, I'm Yu Wei Liu, Senior AI Engineer at Oppo. Our team put a lot of effort into the research of chip power conception, making effort to increase the energy efficiency of the chip through improving the collaboration between algorithm and chips. Last year, Qualcomm Technologies announced a new collaboration with Google Cloud that would see Snapdragon become the world's first mobile platform to support Google Cloud Vectors AI, NAS. Since then, Oppo has been working closely with Qualcomm Technologies and Google to bring Google NAS to smartphones for the first time in the industry to optimize the AI algorithm based on hardware characteristics of the Snapdragon Agent 2 mobile platform. Our solution reduced the power conception of the target detection algorithm by 27% and the computing latency by 40%. In a shorter development time, we can train AI models with greater energy efficiency and hardware friendliness. We will apply this technology to more scenarios in the future and bring our users smoother and more convenient experience. Thank you again. So thank you to Yue. Again, I want to reiterate, the, the, the sophistication of the AI stack, all the tools that we want to bring, the enhancements from quantization, from NAS, this is all focused on increasing the developer access to all of uh, Snapdragon Silicon and, e and reducing the time to market while focusing on that power efficiency. Now, we don't really think we've gone quite far enough. And so today, I'm super excited to unveil for the first time a brand new product. Okay, the Qualcomm AI Studio. Now you're gonna to get to see a little more about this, okay? We're gonna take you through it. But the point of this is, maybe we're gonna try that again. Okay. <laughs> okay, the point of this is this. We, we, we brought to you, we're gonna show you, we brought to you an entirely new uh, graphical user interface. The idea behind this is a unified place to bring all of our tools together. What I'm showing you here is that it's project-based. So we, we thought at first is, let's bring all of your assets together into one unified environment. You can bring, you can give it a project name, Snapdragon Summit. You can bring in models. Um, in this case, we're gonna um, take you through a demo of a bunch of models. And of course, we got Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is our target hardware, okay? So let's get started. We're gonna go ahead and load up that model. And what you're gonna see here is a really consistent flow. The left panel are gonna be all of the tools that are available to you in the context of what you're doing, the kind of model you have, and so on. In the workflow panel, you're gonna be able to see everything that you have done to work on your model. The network view will be there for you to take a look at your network. Again, we wanna not make this like writing code, we wanna make this look like the kind of neural network that you designed in the first place if you're a developer. And the right panel is a context sensitive detail panel. And you'll see that change as I walk you through various versions of the demo. So, the first thing we're gonna do is we've brought together a lot of new tools. One of these, for example, is the architecture checker. So one of the things that our customers say is, hey, um, you know, what can I do to make my model run faster? And you've seen a bunch of those things. Uh, NAS, 
uh, quantization and so on. But there's things we, we can recommend that are hardware specific. So we're gonna run the architecture checker. We're gonna focus on, hexa, on the hexagon processor. So let me go ahead and do that. And it's gonna run an automated tool. And then you'll be able to overlay what your model looks like with the observations, the analysis that the architecture checker brings to the platform. And you can see here on the right detail panel, the context this time is recommendations that, that our analysis tool has made to improve your network. So let's go ahead and accept those. And then we'll save the, uh, the model. So now, again, remind you about the workflow. Every step you've taken, you can go back, you can look at the details and so on. Now at this point, we're gonna quantize the network. Of course it'll be int4, right? And once I quantize it, I'm gonna go ahead and run it on Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 with the hexagon processor. So let's go ahead and do that. So you can see we're targeting the hexagon processor. It'll take a second. And now the detail panel has said this. Look, if you look at the green box right there under graph execution, 11% improvement in runtime performance by accepting the recommendations from the architecture checker. Details about your network, how many layers, what percentage of layers make everything up. You can drill down through the various you know, filters or convolution functions. You can break down how much everything is taken to run. This is just a start. We're gonna keep adding tools to this, okay? So one of the other things is, hey, wouldn't it be really cool if it did a lot of things automatically for you, right? So we've built tools in to help you accelerate your workflow, right? In this case, we're gonna run the quick verify. And one of the jobs of the quick verify is, you know, latency is important, size is important, performance is important, but so is accuracy, as you've heard, right? We're gonna get you tools that get you to int four, but accuracy is obviously really important. So this tool in particular lets you check various accuracy metrics you might be interested in, which, which runtimes or IP targets you're interested in, and it'll do an analysis for you, and it'll show you everything it's doing. So again, the workflow view records everything that's been done. In this case, it's automatic. And again, we're gonna focus, of course, on the hexagon processor, and we're gonna drill down into what, what, what happened here. What did it look like? So we'll load those details. Again, you see the network view in the graph view, and it, this time the detail view is talking about accuracy. So you can see we had 99.005% of the same accuracy as when we started. And again, you get a context sensitive, beautiful view of everything that you're doing. So we're super excited about this, uh, this brand new tool. You guys are the first to see it and hear about it, okay? And it's the, the complement that the stack needed, right? All of those tools we've talked about brought together under one AI studio. It'll be like the top of the stack and we'll continue to innovate on new tools and new ways to increase access for developers and reduce that time to market while still achieving the best power performance in the industry. Now you've seen all of these cool AI use cases and they're running today on the Qualcomm AI stack. And you've heard a whole day of them and the next couple of days you'll hear more, right? But some of the really cool things you can do, you heard about the Unreal Engine in the, in the keynote this morning. You know, th what this takes is to build a plugin in, with Unreal Engine and link Unreal Engine and the Qualcomm AI stack. And the exciting thing is that that's what this is built for. This is built for developers to innovate, for developers to link the AI stack to other things that they're doing. So super excited that now you can do things like AI bot offload. But think about all the other things you could do with the AI stack by doing sim similar integrations in your use cases. Okay, speaking of innovation, another first exciting announcement. Qualcomm has always been about innovation. And so today we're announcing an early access launch program for the Qualcomm Innovators Development Kit. This is gonna be eight Gen 2 hardware, software, examples, documentation, and the Qualcomm AI stack all put together and launching first with three premier universities, Duke, MIT CSAIL, and my alma mater, UCSD. Really excited we're starting with these universities. We'll be branching out and providing this kind of access to a wider community as, as the program rolls out. So really excited to have that uh, announcement here today as well. 
Okay. We've kept you for an amazing 40 minutes or so. You've heard about all of the innovation. Uh, really happy to have you. Let me just kind of recap. Okay, microtile inferencing. First in int four. Dual processor in the sensing hub. 60% power efficiency. Use cases that matter, like multi-language translation. First announcement of the Qualcomm AI Studio. Feature updates, more access to the ecosystem, better developer kit. I mean, what more could you really want? Qualcomm AI Engine. When you come to Qualcomm, you get the best AI hardware, the best AI software, and the best AI tools. So with that, I thank you for your attention. I'll welcome my colleagues back on stage, and we'll roll over into a Q&A session. So just as a reminder, um, you can scan the QR code and submit your question, and then I'll just read it aloud. So there's been a few um, submitted already. So the first one is, please explain microtile inferencing. <laughs> All right, cool. I'll take that one. So um, microtile inferencing is a way that, because of the special nature of the hexagon processor, we can take a neural network and split it up into a very small number of microtiles. With each one of those small parts of the neural network, we can execute them in a different order so that we can get a lot of parallel processing, utilize the entire hexagon processor, and execute lots of layers at one time, saving a lot of memory reads and writes, a lot of that unnecessary data traffic that we talked about. That gives us better performance and better power efficiency. It also means that we have a lot of flexibility for software. So that's microtile inferencing. Okay, follow up. How big is a microtile? Yes. Uh, <laughs> so our pro we have a single hexagon processor, right? So we have a lot of flexibility. We can deal with the entire network as one. But uh, microtile, if you think about the size of a network, the size of an input resolution, the size of input resolution, then dozens of different layers, we can crack one of those networks up into tens of thousands of microtiles. So you can kind of do the math. It gets to be relatively small, but still a significant enough chunk that it's very useful to be able to save all that memory traffic. Okay, could microtile inferencing be used on machine learning or deep learning? Both, yes, machine learning and deep learning. So any, any kind of uh, AI workload, it should be applicable. And again, with all the flexibility. I think it's uh, a bit of a semantic question, but yeah, yeah because we yeah. talked about transformers. Yeah. We've talked about a lot of different kinds of networks. It's really applicable to, and I feel like I shouldn't turn my back to the rest <laughs> of the audience. Uh, it's really applicable to, um, you know, all of the networks that can run on Hexagon and the AI engine. Yeah. There's no restrictions, basically. Yeah. Any classes of deep learning networks is totally doable. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. How secure is the Hexagon direct link? Doesn't it seem like a valuable attack vector for hackers? So Hexagon direct link basically provides you a foundational investment to actually transfer data between two modules. So in this case, we have two examples that we have shown between the uh, ISP and the Hexagon and the Adreno graphics and the, um, and the Hexagon itself. By definition, this is not opened up to any form of uh, you know, external access point. It is completely internal, uh, completely controlled uh, in a fashion that you happen to have a data exchange to really support some complex use cases. So we don't believe you know, at this point of time there's any kind of security concerns and we have take uh, security concerns with utmost importance to really make sure this is actually taken care of as part of investments in the hexagon direct link. Okay, microtile inferencing. Um, is that execution only by hexagon or CPU, GPU as well? So that is a functionality that's enabled because of the nature of the hexagon processor. So that is something that's executing just on the hexagon processor. I don't know if there's any other comments on the software point of view on that? No, it's, okay. it's really focused on, as you've already said, bringing those three engines together you know, in a really highly parallel way to maximize you know, power performance. Yeah, scalar, vector, and tensor, yeah. Okay, how is micro tiling different from current methods of mini tensors shading data models across an SOC? Um, I'm not going to get into like deep details on different techniques for doing um, AI. I'd love to have a you know sort of a smaller conversation with anyone at any point. I'm around all week. <laughs> okay, um, what's made? What's the major meaning that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is supporting Int 4, like processing more data at the same time? 
Uh, what it really means is, you know, one of the biggest challenges that we have as we start exploring and enabling some complex use cases is can I have better quality of service? Can I have better latency? Especially uh, first inference latency applications becomes quite important. So our expectation is uh, without compromising on performance or without compromising on accuracy, can I get much better latency? So with this investment of Info, we're now able to process uh, a model much more faster uh, for a, you know, compared to that of a floating point 32 model. So that's the biggest investment we have. And obviously, it has a plethora of advantages. One such advantage I just mentioned is in terms of any application that has emphasis on first inference latency. This is fantastic. OK, does Qualcomm plan to monetize AI Studio? Uh, we're not going to talk about our commercial plans about uh, AI Studio. We're really excited that you guys are excited to get your hands on it. That's the yeah. important part of that message. Uh, the most important element for us uh, to add to what Jeff mentioned is to really scale and yeah. have much more developer access reach point and then drive innovation on the edge. So that's our primary focus. And our intention is to make sure that we make it as easy as possible to use so that the solution deployment of AI models becomes much more easier. OK, will Qualcomm AI Studio feature an expandable AI tool in the future? I'd have to speculate on what expandable AI tool actually might mean. But um, you know, we're in the early days of doing this. You saw, I think, an incredible demo. Um, if the question really is getting at things like plugins and stuff, we'll certainly consider that kind of architecture going forward. OK, can you elaborate on the AI features of the 5G modem? Which benefits is AI bringing specifically? Yeah, so our investments are specifically on the AI side to modem, obviously, is to really make sure we can have uh, better signal integrity and how best we can really make sure that we can get that done, better signal to noise ratio to really make sure it has much impactful user experience. So that is our focus of attention, and we use our AI analytics in the modem side to really make sure that we can get that done. OK, Hexagon Direct Linked, is this bi-directional? How is bandwidth? That's a great question. Uh, Hexagon Direct Link is bi-directional. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, the handshake of information is quite clear and quite nice. So we have established a certain protocol to really make it happen. Um, and uh, definitely high bandwidth. That's the main intention, is to really make sure we support or enable use cases that are uh, high bandwidth, low latency, load balancing, all those kind of scenarios can be fully supported with this investment of the Hexagon Direct Link. OK, with regards to large language models, how large are the multi-layer perception and transformers models that can be run? Oh, boy. OK, um, well, we're, I'm not going to speculate on an exact size. Uh, I will say that they, um, you know, there's always a balance here. For power performance, we are trying to balance you know, a language model which is big enough to produce the kind of result and accuracy and speed that you need and you know, fit on device. So I'm not going to speculate on, on particular uh, model parameters. It would have to be a function of things like quantization, how effectively you can quantize the lower bits, mixed precision, uh, how many languages, what kind of language, a lot of parameters of that. But um, you know, like hund hundreds of millions of parameters, at least, would be you know, kind of a, gives you some sense about the size. It's pretty large models. So just to add to what Jeff has mentioned, right, uh, transformers are a completely brand new set of architecture uh, at this point of time. And transformers, to a large extent, uh, started off with natural language processing, but has now also morphed into support vision-based use cases. Now, our intention is to really support state-of-the-art um, transformer models, which can be deployed on the edge. And our expectation is we have sufficient compute and memory investments to really get this going. Our intention is to really make sure with the Qualcomm AI stack that Jeff mentioned, which has all the plethora of possibilities in terms of quantization, in terms of reshaping the tensors, that we don't lose on uh, accuracy, but you get the highest performance and quite easily can be deployed with the developer community. So for us, Transformers is the next big thing for us, for sure. OK, when will Snapdragon AI Studio be made available? We are going to um, preview it with some select partners in the first half of 23, and then you will see it start to roll out you know, beyond that. What is the development platform for AI Studio? 
AI Studio will be cross-platform. We designed it, uh, again, we talked, I said, from the ground up, meaning from the ground up. <laughs> Uh, we took a lot of the things that we have already learned about building tools and customer feedback, and it will purposefully be cross-platform uh, from day one. Okay, is Int4 support only for new Gen 8 Gen 2, or can you support older versions of Hexagon? So currently, we are launching Int4 on Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, so that will be our first product intercept that we are really making it commercial ready and ready for deployment. Okay, and last question, Int4 versus Int8 comparison video, what are we supposed to be looking at? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, great question. Let me make it as simple again, right? So the expectation is uh, start looking at spatial details, start looking at dynamic range. Do you see any you know, loss of information from a subjective standpoint? Now, obviously, we do a lot of analysis from, a sub, from an objective metric standpoint, looking at PSNR, looking at PSIMs, and then they look pretty compatible. But there's always an instance when somebody can come back and say, I don't like that image. There's no objective metrics to qualify it. It's all based off, you know, the beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder, right, as someone said. So it, you actually have to see it to believe it. So we really want to make sure that for that set of audience who really make sure that subjective image quality is quite important, we actually worked with our premium partner, ArcSoft, in this case, to really get the same field of view and capture from different data types and see if we can make a difference. And we didn't find the difference. We wanted to make sure you guys may be a judgment of that and keep us informed. Okay, so that's a wrap for our Snapdragon Site Tech Talk. Smart, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and we're gonna now open it up for hands-on access with the demos that we showed earlier. So you guys can kind of stand up, stretch your legs, um, and walk around the room and experience the demos um, that you saw earlier. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.